HD Devagoda. The last decade of the 20th century marked the end of one party dominance and the start of the multi party coalition era. The Congress lost its pole position in nation building and its central role in Indian politics. In the meantime, the Bharatiya Janata Party or the BJP emerged as the principal challenger to the Congress and a claimant to power. Regional parties too were growing in strength and filling the space created by the Congress. But none of the three were in a position to form a government on its own after the fractured mandate of the 1996 elections. Coalition wasn't a choice, it was a political necessity. In response to the BJP's emergence as the single largest party, the Janta Dal, regional parties and the left front floated a platform called the United Front also referred to as a third front. Together, they had 192 members in the Lok Sabha. The 1996 elections were the first Lok Sabha polls held after the demolition of the Babri Masjid. The BJP clearly was on an upswing. It increased its tally from 119 seats in 91 to 161. With its allies, the number went up to 201 but it was still far from the majority mark of 272. The BJP and its allies was the single largest bloc, with the Congress in second place with 140 seats. The entire non-BJP political class had learned hard lessons from the turmoil of the early 90s, marked by a brazen mixing of religion and politics, which had created a bitter Hindu-Muslim divide. The BJP's communal agenda was unacceptable to them. They were determined to keep the BJP out of power but could not stop the party from forming the first BJP-led government led by Atal Bihari Vajpayee. The Vajpayee government lasted just 13 days. He resigned on the 28th of May after failing to cobble together a majority. This paved the way for the United Front to stake its claim to form a government. The United Front was a ragtag group of different regional parties with multiple leaders and interest groups competing with each other. It was formed with 13 constituents like the Janta Dal, the Samajwadi Party, Telugu Desam Party, the DMK, Ahom Gana Parishad, Tamil Manila Congress, National Conference, the Congress Tiwari Group, MGP, CPI, CPIM, RSP and the Forward Bloc. Forming a front was easier than electing a leader and a prime ministerial candidate acceptable to all. Their first choice was Janta Dal leader VP Singh, who had virtually retired from active politics. He declined the offer. Jyoti Basu, the CPM's leader and West Bengal chief minister, was the second choice. Basu was willing, but his party vetoed the proposal. Basu later said it was a historic blunder for the communists to have missed the opportunity to head a government at the centre. After much debate, Janta Dal leader and Karnataka Chief Minister H.D. Devagauda was elected as the leader of the United Front. Judiciously discharged my duties as Prime Minister. He was sworn in as Prime Minister on the 1st of June 1996 with outside support from the Congress. But the survival of the coalition government was in question from the very beginning. In 1979, Indira Gandhi had supported the breakaway Janata Party group headed by Charan Singh to form the government. The Congress brought down the government in just 23 days. In 1990, Rajiv Gandhi had propped up the Chandrasekhar government but withdrew support within four months. H.D. Devagauda met the same fate. Congress President Sitaram Kesri pulled down the government when the Central Bureau of Investigation appeared to be making progress in the Beaufort's case, an issue sensitive to Rajiv Gandhi's family. The government fell in less than 11 months on the 11th of April 1997. Ten days after Gauda's government collapsed, I.K. Gujral, Minister of External Affairs and his minister, took oath as Prime Minister on the 21st of April. Charge my duty as Prime Minister for the Union. Gujral faced a crisis in June after the Justice Jain Commission submitted an interim report in the Rajiv Gandhi assassination case. The Jain Commission pointed fingers at the DMK for facilitating operations of the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam or LTTE in Tamil Nadu. 
an LTTE suicide bomber had killed Rajiv Gandhi in 1991. The Congress demanded that DMK ministers be sacked from the government, but Gujral refused to give in. On the 28th of November 1997, the Congress withdrew support to the government and I.K. Gujral resigned. The fall of the two United Front governments in quick succession raised questions about the efficacy and viability of coalition politics. But it wasn't really the concept of coalition as much as its structure that had led to the failure of these United Front governments. For a coalition government to succeed, it needs a dominant party at the center, at its core, with smaller parties revolving around it. Depending on outside support for survival keeps the government on a razor's edge. And this proved right because going forward, India had two successful coalition governments after the failed United Front experiment. The first, the National Democratic Alliance, headed by Vajpayee, had the BJP at its core. The second, the United Progressive Alliance, led by Sonia Gandhi, had the Congress anchoring it. The United Front had no such anchor to hold it together and it failed. Nevertheless, it marked the beginning of coalition politics in India.